Peace and light to one and all, and welcome to the Mind's Eye Podcast. I'm your host, Paul James Caden, and today on the show, we are going to be talking about the devil in your bathroom. Now, that sounds a little bit creepy, but rest assured, we are not talking about a literal devil hanging out in your bathroom, in your house. This is uh, really a metaphor that I'm going to uh, explain in just a moment. But the main thrust of our conversation today is really about the fears and the superstitions that have been interjected into our spirituality and our religions over the years. And there's really no religion that's exempt from this. All religions, all people, they all have superstitions and fears and always kind of looking over their shoulders for like the bad spirits are going to wreak havoc in their lives or possess them and get them and make them sick or make life miserable for them. And we even see a lot of people in Christianity who say they follow a God of love and a God of peace and they have Jesus in their heart and they're filled with you know, Holy Spirit, but yet they're very afraid and they spend a lot of their time focusing on and majoring on uh, things that are very dark, demons, devils, apocalypse. And this really does eclipse the light. It robs us of the joy of really having an honest, loving happy, free relationship with God because we have all of this stuff that's in between trying to thwart the will of God in our lives, trying to tempt us, trying to get us away from the will of God in our lives. And, you know, it it becomes so confusing and so frustrating. And I called this podcast, The Devil in Your Bathroom, because it was really inspired by uh, probably about three weeks ago or a little better. I was watching a free course online, and uh, the course was on uh, something called Rokia. Now, if you don't know what that is, Rokia is a Muslim form of spiritual healing by reciting the Quran over someone who is ill or suffering. And of course, reciting these words over the person who might be ill is said to facilitate uh, some kind of healing or deliverance. Now, there are certain uh, superstitious ideas also embedded in the system of Rokia, which the Quran is recited to remove the evil eye or curses or jinn possession. But nonetheless, that's uh, not really what we're going to get into here, talking about the the superstitions attached to uh, Rokia. But the individual who is giving this talk, who is giving this class on how to perform Rokia, for those who are interested He talked about all of the things that a person must do in order to be clean before God in order to perform rokia on another person. And there were all these different rules that if you walk outside after dusk, you have to invoke the name of Allah or say a certain prayer. Uh, say that prayer again before you enter your house if you go out so the jinn don't follow you into your home. Uh, There's all kinds of rules and regulations. And one of them was don't spend too much time in the bathroom (laughs) of your home. And the instructor went on to say, you know, a lot of people like to go into the bathroom and you know, linger and take their time and look at their cell phone or do crossword puzzles. And this is a mistake because the bathroom is a place of filth and devils 
dwell and hang out near places of filth. So hanging out too long in the bathroom uh, could really entice one of these devils to attack you, attach themselves to you, or make trouble for you in your life. So hence the idea, the devil in your bathroom. But I think the devil in in the bathroom is... uh, really covers, uh, for me being a metaphor, it covers a lot of the superstitions that we have in our religions. Because you hear things like, you know, don't go to graveyards, don't go to cemeteries. You know, if you go there to visit someone's grave, uh, you know, say certain prayers, surround yourself with white light, make it very quick, exit very quickly because there are devils or demons or unclean spirits that hang out amongst the tombs. And this idea mostly comes from the idea in the Gospels in the Bible where uh, Jesus went to a certain town and there was a man who was possessed by many devils and it said he wandered through the tombs day and night, you know, yelling and cutting himself with stones And uh, Jesus eventually cast uh, the legion out of this man. And so this is really where the idea comes from. And I've heard a lot of pastors uh, and ministers say this, you know, that this story shows us that demons like to hang out. You know, all these demons possess this man. And he was always, you know, wandering among the tombs. So obviously demons like to hang out in, in graveyards. So we have... All of these notions of the good spirits and the bad spirits that are always battling over our lives. And and most times, the bad spirits seem to have more territory and more power than the good spirits. They are in the bathroom. They are in the graveyards. Uh, there's a lot of people, Christians, and I also heard... Uh, this individual who was teaching the Rokia course who said don't watch horror movies and if you do make sure that you're well protected with prayer in the name of God because if not uh, there are devils on the other side of the TV screen looking out as you're looking at the TV screen they're looking out at you And he said, demons and devils and jinn, they are energy, just like the energy that, you know, flows through our telephone wires and, you know, through our internet service. And these things are attracted to the energy and the violence and the fear of horror movies. And they will follow that energy that is being broadcasted right into your TV set And, you know, he said these demons and devils will be watching you from the other side of the screen. And before you know it, they'll be standing right there in your living room looking at you saying, how can we harm and hurt this individual? Now, I would recommend, you know, we we talked about the Arantia book in uh, the last show with my guest, Paul Claver. And I would really recommend that anybody listening to this podcast uh, read, I, I believe it's section three, the history of Urantia in the Urantia book. And uh, down a ways, you, they get into the evolution of religion and the ghost cults. And the Urantia book does a wonderful job of showing how from the very beginnings of primitive man who was very ignorant when religion began to evolve in their lives they had a lot of fear of ghosts um, ancestors nature spirits there were spirits everywhere spirits in the water spirits in the trees spirits in the air the spirits of the mountains and their primary job was to 
always appease these spirits through rituals or maybe saying a certain prayer or doing a certain thing before they crossed a stream or cut down a tree or went to the mountain. And, and you'll see, once you start reading the, uh, the evolution of religion and getting into the ghost, the ghost cults and the ancestor worship, you'll see a lot of the beginnings of ghost cult superstitions that we still have in our world today. Things such as leaving out food offerings for the spirits and the ancestors, saying certain prayers before we go to the graveyard or when we walk out of the door of our home or when we uh, come back into our home, certain funeral rituals that we all have and that we all do when someone passes away, a loved one or a family member, and we don't realize how some of or a lot of these traditions that we have today evolved from the ghost cults of yesteryear, of early man. And we even have some of the belief systems that hold on one of which was this battle of the good spirits and the bad spirits. And the Arantia book really explains how early man did not believe in a universe of unity, but rather a universe that was always at odds or at war with itself. You know, the good versus the bad, the dark versus the light. And the bad spirits seem to be so much more powerful and prominent in people's lives than the good spirits. And the good spirits to primitive man uh, were almost, almost indifferent as long as man wasn't doing anything wrong, anything bad, doing what he was supposed to do. The good spirits were just kind of like, well, okay, you know, he's, he's doing okay, so we're, we're really not going to interfere in his life. You know, that they were kind of indifferent uh, to mankind, according to the, the, uh, the primitive tribes. And we see that, again, carry over into our religions today, because how much emphasis does people put on demons and devils and bad spirits? They're going to get you if you watch horror movies. They're going to get you if you go to the graveyard. They're going to get you if you have the wrong religion. They're going to get you if you have certain objects or statues or figurines in your house because they're attached to those things. I mean, they are everywhere. They infest everything. And life is like walking through a minefield. Be careful where you step because, you know, this thing could really blow up on you and the bad spirits are just going to come swarming in like, you know, um, a hive of angry bees and just attack you in every, every direction. And meanwhile, God and the angels uh, almost seem like they're indifferent. You know, on top of all of this, God tests us. God tries us. Uh, he tests us sometimes through the attacks of the evil spirits. So it becomes very confusing. You know, who's on our side? Who's not on our side? Are we doing okay? Are we not doing okay? Why is life such a mess? All these bad things are happening to me. And, you know, bad luck is generally uh, equated with devils and demons and bad spirits. And this goes back to the ghost cults as well, that good fortune meant the good spirits were smiling upon you and the bad spirits were appeased through your rituals or whatever you did to try to thwart their powers in your life. Or if things were going bad, you were having money troubles, your house burned down, you were having health issues, your wife or your husband passes away, all these trials and tribulations. Uh, bad fortune or bad luck was said to be from the bad spirits. They were angry. We did something to uh, 
agitate them or invite them into our lives and they were now harassing us. And we see that again carrying over even into modern day religion. Things are going bad. You know, the devil's after me. You know, the demons are after me. I'm being, I'm being spiritually harassed and oppressed. How much uh, or how many times do we hear people say that, uh, you know, from different religious backgrounds? And again, a lot of this goes back, if you read section three of the uh, Urantia book about the evolution of religion, that at one time in the history of man, um, man was more afraid of the ghosts and the spirits, you know, the nature spirits, the tree spirits, the spirits of the dead. You know, once they leave the body, if they don't go on to ghost land, they'll hang around and might make your life miserable. And uh, eventually, the first gods that primitive man worshipped were glorified human beings, men and women who ascended to the heavens somehow in great enlightenment or a great chief or a great king or a princess or whatever the case may be and they became gods and these gods being former human beings well they could be fickle like human beings they could be indifferent to our pleas they could test us through uh you know sending uh you know bad spirits into our lives so you never really knew where you stood uh you know with these deified human beings and eventually when the gods just became uh, beings that never uh, lived on the earth in human form uh, they were still very fickle they they inherited um, these bad behaviors from the uh, the deified uh, human beings who rose to be gods and you, you look at it, you look at Greek mythology, you look at their gods, you look at the Norse gods, you know, gods that were given to violence and, you know, drunkenness and sex orgies in heaven, you know, uh, sex with their sister and having a son and the son sleeps with the mother. I mean, there's all kinds of entanglements of uh, lust and, you know, debauchery when it comes to the, uh, the ancient gods. Because little by little, it went from the ghost cults to deified human beings to gods who never walked the earth in human form, but they very much behaved like human beings or the deified human beings who uh, came before them in belief systems. And so you, you think about this. How much of this carries over into our religion and our spirituality today you know now you know god may not be having uh, orgies and you know drunken parties of lust in the heavens but he's still very fickle and he's still very angry he's still very aloof while these bad spirits are everywhere just tormenting man and making man sick and bringing him bad fortune and you know pushing him and nudging him to do evil deeds and temptations but yet you hear so many people say including ministers you know that sometimes it's so hard to see god in all of this sometimes it seems like you know, we're storming the gates of heaven and God doesn't answer us or he answers us at the very last minute or he doesn't answer us until we're overtaken by this trial and we're completely broken before him. You know, very, very humanistic uh, characteristics that we still give to God in order to submit to him or make us submit to him, he must break us, even if it's for our own good. And this is a very different picture of the way I've always seen God, as someone who 
strengthens you through the trial and helps you to gain wisdom despite what you're going through. And this is also the picture of God in the Arantia book. You know, we pray that we have strength and faith and wisdom to make it through the trial. And naturally, if God so wills, he can, you know, intervene or the angels can intervene and deliver us from certain trials. Uh, you know, and, and it is true that we learn from experience. And sometimes we face things in this world that we go through and our faith is strengthened or our character is strengthened. Our patience is strengthened when we, when we reach the other side. But God is there helping us through it. Not standing idly by waiting for us to break and crumble and then say, okay, now you're in a place where you're completely broken. Uh, you're completely submitting to me and now I will help you. That, that sounds more like a cult leader. You know, cults usually break down uh, people that want to join. You know, they break them down spiritually. They break them down psychologically and mentally and even physically through sleep deprivation or different kinds of torture and painful afflictions. You know, but God isn't a cult member. He doesn't have to break us and completely shatter us in order to make us join his club. This is none other than a carryover from the religions of old. The fickle human deities, the fickle gods and goddesses of old, who are much like we are. And when you really think about it, I mean, the, the superstitions and the fears that are embedded in so much of our religion are, are far too many to mention in, you know, a 30, 35 minute podcast. But all of us know, everyone listening to the sound of my voice right now knows how many fears and superstitions there are. There's probably fears and superstitions that you have. You, the listener, things that worry you, things that upset you, things that give you anxiety, even right down to the idea of, you know, if I don't have the right religion, I could be subject to evil spirits and eternal punishment when I die because I didn't believe in the right thing, you know. Uh, I don't know what movies to watch or books to read or what job I should have because, you know, is what I'm doing right now too secular, too worldly, and God is God going to be displeased with that? And as a spiritual counselor, you would be surprised how many times I get that question in a week. You know, I work for... A supermarket. I work for um, a company where uh, the owner of the company is a very shrewd, dishonest man. You know, he does shady business. I don't have any doings with him. I'm just an employee. But am I sinning by having this job working in a supermarket or a bookstore that sells New Age books or books on Wicca or? whatever the case may be, different religions. Am I sinning? Is God unhappy with me? Because I work for a company whose owner uh, is uh, dishonest and crooked and works people out of money. You know, I've been having some bad luck lately and, uh, you know, my health has taken a little bit of turn for the worse. I haven't been feeling well. Is this because I have this certain kind of job? I mean, this is a question people ask, and they ask often enough. And so we see this carryover of the bad spirits and the fickle God, you know, displeased with our little mortal actions 
in life and they will oppress oppress us oppress us and punish us and might make life difficult for us for something we don't even really we don't even know what we've done. Is it because of my job? Is it because of the book I'm reading? Is it because of the music I enjoy? Is it because I have a little Buddha statue in my home? Uh, why are these bad things happening to me? So as I said, there's, there's a lot. There's too much to really mention when it comes to the things that people believe and the superstitions and the fears that we still have that plague us and we live in fear and we live in anxiety and we live being afraid of God or, you know, having that notion that, uh, you know, the old uh, religionists used to say, the pastors, well, you never know what God's going to do, you know, because he might bless you one day and take it all away the next, like Job for some reason or no reason at all that he just wants to test you. He blesses you with good health and a good job and a beautiful family and, you know, everything is going right. You're not a bad person. Then all of a sudden you lose the job, you lose the house, somebody falls ill. Well, you know, this might be God. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. All of these ideas, superstitious, fear-based ideas carried over from the primitive religions of man and the ghost cults and ancestor worship and nature spirits and deities who lived on mountains and who would get mad as hell and strike you down if you picked a little posy at the foot of their sacred mountain or, for, you know, some little innocent thing. You know, you, you, you stepped on a sacred blade of grass or picked up a beautiful stone and took it home to your hut and you know that was the you know that beautiful stone belonged to the god you know mountain man or whoever he might be and uh, and now there's all kind of trouble coming to you all this is a carryover from these primitive religions so i would really again suggest people uh, read, uh, I believe it's section part three of the Arantia book. Uh, there's a lot, it's the history of Arantia. There's a lot of things in there about the history of the earth and Adam and Eve. Uh, but when you get down a ways, you'll see uh, the, the, um, the evolution of religion and the ghost cults and ancestor worship and ghost fear. And uh, it's really worth the read because you'll see a lot of yourself and a lot of society and a lot of man's religions and beliefs and fears and superstition in those pages and in those ancient beliefs. And it really is an eye-opener that makes you say, wow, I never knew that's where that came from, and I was afraid of that all my life. I believed that all my life. I had anxiety over such a thing all my life. I didn't know that this is where this evolved from. So it's very freeing to know this information. And I certainly agree with the Arantia book that presents God as a very loving father. He's for us. He's not against us. There's nothing to ever fear. We're not to be afraid of him. He loves us. He wants us to love him. He wants us to have faith in him. The Arantia book tells us that Jesus came to bring this concept, this truth of the loving father to humanity. And as Jesus said, you know, in the uh, part four of the Arantia book, in the Jesus papers, he says, there's nothing ever to fear. There's no nothing ever to fear. If someone kills you, they kill the physical body, well then what? They have no more power over you. There's, there's nothing ever to fear, and certainly never to fear God. So perhaps it's time to really look at our own lives, our own spirituality, our own religion, and see where the fears and the superstitions lie. And then ask ourselves, is this 
really how God is? Is this really how God created the universe and the heavens and the earth? Is this really what it's all about? Do I really live in a universe that's at war with itself and the darkness really seems to be so much more powerful than the light? Because God is indifferent or God is testing us through the darkness, seeing just what we're going to do. You know, us poor mortals born on this planet Earth, you know, we live Lord knows how long, you know, to our teens, 20s, 50s, 60s, 80s, 90s if we're lucky, but that's still not a long time. And we're bombarded with all of this stuff from the dark side. And if we fail the test, if we give up, then God throws us into this place of eternal torment. That seems rather unfair. That seems very unloving and rather unjust when you think about it. And that's something we're going to talk about in uh, the next show is the character of God. You know, talking about this idea uh, of, you know, being tested and do I have the right religion? Is there a right religion that we must believe in? And everybody else, no matter how good they are, uh, you know, they're going to be in for a world of hurt when they die. We're going to talk about all this as well because it's important. And once we take a look at that and kind of dispel some of those myths, a lot of these other superstitions begin to fall away. Because we realize that God is not that way. God does not treat us in such a manner. God's not indifferent while the dark side, you know, just runs rampant in our world and in our lives. You know, we even have this idea today that uh, comes from Gnosticism that people believe in, that the God of the Old Testament was this, you know, evil uh, demigod, and he's the one who created the earth, the physical world, and this whole world is nothing but a big evil matrix. You know, everything here is one big deception, and when we die, they want to catch our soul and reincarnate us and send us back into this world because it's a big soul farm where they feed on our fearful energies, all kinds of things. But again, I ask the question, where, where is God in all of that? Another superstition, another fear. And if you look on the internet and you look on inner to the, the, yeah, the inner tube, if you look on the internet and you look on YouTube, you'll find You know, droves of people that have articles and make videos and have video channels about this kind of thing. You know, the this whole world is, you know, an evil place, an evil illusion created by an evil God. But where's the good God? According to these people, we have to figure out all these mysteries and puzzles and, you know, deeper inner meanings of the Bible that are so complex that we need these special anointed teachers that are on YouTube to tell us what it really means to, you know, discover the truth in Christ within us and, you know, rise above the matrix. And if not, if we don't know these secrets, well, we're going to be stuck in this soul farm, you know? So these are all things we're going to talk about the next time. And when we find out, as I said, that God is not this way, All that other stuff just falls away. And it's a beautiful thing. It's a peaceful thing. And you will then have serenity like you've probably never known. So I hope you got something out of this podcast today. I hope you will think about the fears and the superstitions in your own spiritual walk, your own religion, and maybe start one by one, pulling them out like weeds from a garden. Uh, Hopefully you will read uh, part three of the Arantia book, The History of Arantia. Look into the part that talks about the evolution of religion and the ghost cults and the ancestor worship and the early deified human beings that were gods and all of these ideas that uh, sprang from that that are still 
interwoven in our society today through traditions and religious belief and superstitions. Very freeing stuff to know. So again, I hope you got something out of this. I appreciate you listening. Until next time, stay safe, stay well. And I'll see you next time here on the Mind's Eye Podcast.